All right, welcome everybody to the inaugural um, meeting of the, the uh, Identifying Security Threats uh, OpenSSF uh, Working Group. Uh, what I was thinking is to start off today with um, just kind of a round of introductions for everybody. So um, my name is Mike Scavetta. Um, I was kind of leading the uh, similar work group under the Open Source Security Coalition. Uh, I've been doing open source security stuff for about uh, six years, six or so years. I've been doing security stuff for about, I don't know, 15 or so, and then development before that. So um, I work at Microsoft. I'm a, a program manager or technical program manager by um, as day job, uh, but I run an open source security team here. So this is also part of what I kind of get paid to do as well. So. Uh, and then just open it up for other folks to introduce themselves. All right, I'll step in. Um, my name is Jennifer Fernick. I am the head of research at NCC Group. So some of you might be familiar with NCC, some might not. Um, we're a large cybersecurity consultancy, mo mostly fo focused on um, security audits and penetration testing, but with like specialist practices in different areas as well. Um, I've been a part of this group kind of from the get-go with Michael um, back when it was part of the Open Source Security Coalition. Um, now that it's OpenSSF, I'm really excited uh, as we expand the, the group and, and the participants. Um, I also sit on the governing board of the OpenSSF group, and um, my day job is mostly around um, orchestrating various types of security research, um, some on open source targets and some not. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, if we go by order, I guess I'm next. Uh, David A. Wheeler. Uh, I'm actually uh, work for the Linux Foundation. Um, so I've been doing, let's see, gracious, uh, security since the 1980s, open source since the 1990s. Uh, so uh, very, very interested in helping out this group uh, however I can. All right, uh, I'm not sure what order we are going in, uh, but I, I'll, I'll just go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, my name is Kamleshwar. I'm from India. Uh, I am the head of engineering in a very small startup. Uh, it is called Debus. Uh, so I got to see uh, regarding OSS. Uh, I think on Twitter. Uh, obviously interested because uh, I I've been a developer for ten years now, and still a hands-on developer and a manager. Uh, security is one of the biggest concerns which we have as uh, as a B two B product developer. So I'm I, I think I already mentioned in the email uh, invite request email saying that uh, I would be interested in finding out what what exactly is going I mean what exactly the OSS group or group is going to come up with plus later be at a in a stage to contribute as well. So looking forward to how how things turn out. Great, thanks. Uh, Radek, we'll just do, let's just do it this way. <laughs> you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, just let me know if you hear me. We do. Oh, that's great. Sorry, that's the first time actually I'm using Teams. I used to use Zoom, so that's that's a bit of a new thing, but that's that's <laughs> great. Uh, yes, so my name is Radek Karpovic. Um, I work for the OutZero startup where we provide identity for developers, basically authentication and authorization. Uh, we do a lot of open source as the company, and we do a lot actually around JavaScript, open source technologies and stuff. Uh, and my like day-to-day -day job is around doing uh, security reviews, helping out engineering teams, collaborating with them on like secure architecture, uh, and also I'm working on orchestrating uh, security tools for the company for uh, detecting vulnerabilities, uh, web security scanners, uh, and all, all the things related to security. From the past experience, I was working as the pen tester and the engineer. So I have the engineering background as well. Um, 
And yeah, that would be it, I think. Yeah. Hi. Uh, yeah, uh, I am Dixon Diomedo. So I'm from Cloud Governance team from Citrix. So uh, we are doing cloud governance on all the three clouds, right? Uh, the AWS, all the major clouds, AWS, Azure, GCP, plus Oracle and IBM. Right? I have experience on four clouds. Uh, I have ex I have a total experience of five, but I worked on all the five, four clouds in my career and plus Kubernetes. So we we are doing security for Kubernetes. I have done Kubernetes security before also, right? So plus, yeah. That's it. I'm here to contribute however I can. Great, thank you. Uh, Rao? Hey guys, Rao Lakakula. I'm a director in JP Morgan Chase running application and mobile security teams. Uh, most of you know JP Morgan Chase as a, like a big bank in uh, US, but uh, things actually I didn't know until I joined the company. It also has uh, more than 50,000 uh, engineers. And that also means uh, every day we bring in like hundreds and thousands of the open source libraries into the bank. Uh, so one of the my responsibility there is also securing the open source consumption in the bank, including um, scanning, looking for vulnerabilities, uh, contributing back to the open source securely, all the good stuff. Uh, before JPMC, I was in uh, Amazon for almost like a 10 years running security teams. Before that, I moved for another 10 years. So closer to this field, uh, I'm happy to contribute. Great, thanks. Uh, Jonathan. Yeah, so right now I'm leading application security efforts at DoorDash. Um, so that's quite a bit of open source software. We try to go open source wherever we can. Uh, was at a number of companies before this, including Amazon, in which Rao was my boss. Hey, good to hear you, Jonathan. <laughs> Likewise. Awesome. Uh, did I miss it? Uh, Claudio? Yeah, hi. hi. My name is Claudio Caracciolo. I work for 11Path, that is the cybersecurity unit of, the, I'm sorry, of Telefonica. Telefonica is a big company for, is, is an ISP company from Spain. I work from Argentina uh, and I usually don't speak so much because my English is not so good. My speaking is not so good. <laughs> uh, I work. I am the manager for two different uh, units into 11 Path. One of them is th there are the the ambassadors that people that are doing some conference or uh, giving conference and the other one is the innovation lab uh, where we create some some tool from uh, from giving more security to our uh, organization or or for uh, sharing with the community. Great, thank you. And your English is just fine. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, it's actually okay, awesome. um, Cool. So I I think I got everybody. If uh, if anybody didn't, please please speak up. Um, so. For, I guess it would probably help to set um, kind of just align everybody on like the the goals of this working group and 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 it, it it's certainly fluid and we are kind of the things that we want to work on uh, and we think are important. Um, I don't want to be overly constrained to the specific words in the kind of the working group definition because they kind of sprouted out of the things that we wanted to work on. Um, so I'm certainly interested in hearing about what you all want to work on uh, and what you think is important. And if they and if they totally don't align in, in our working group, they align in another working group. That's great, too. And we should kind of, you know, let those working groups kind of take that. Um, I also have some administrative stuff that we should talk about just in terms of meeting times. Um, I don't know how convenient this time is for everybody, but there were a couple folks that I would really like to be able to attend that have a hard block at this time every every Monday. So um, that's why they haven't been able to join in the past. Um, so I, I'm assuming that everybody can see the web browser that I'm presenting. Yes. Cool. Um, yeah. So this is a shared one. So you guys can edit this too. I posted a link in the chat. Feel free to um, you know, just jump in there and, and edit. Um, 
as we as we go on over the next couple of weeks, we'll figure out like exactly like should this be a markdown thing or a Google Docs thing, and we'll we'll figure out all of that stuff. Um, but the first thing that I had was uh, as far as choosing a recurring meeting time uh, and cadence. Um, uh, there's a there's a doodle link there, so you can just kind of vote. I put on a couple times. If none of those work, you know, uh, just a add a note in the shared notes, and we'll we'll add some more times that to see see if we can find something that really works. I know we have some folks in um, uh, where th this is 9 a.m. and other folks where this is like 9 p.m. So uh, we can't go too far into the middle of the day, otherwise it's the middle of the night um, for others. Uh, as far as cadence goes, I, I, actually, before you go on, uh, I don't see the link. I'm sorry. Ah, okay. Uh, uh, oops, somebody else just posted it. Okay. Or a link anyway. Perfect. I'm I'm curious if you scroll up, do you see the link? I know in Zoom, no. like if you no, no. interesting. No. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, I don't well, see it either, Michael. Okay. I. Uh, it's weird that it would have. Like, I guess the same thing as Zoom, where if you post a link before someone joins, that, that person never sees the link, which is not a great design, but um, but yeah, that's the link. Um, OK, so from a from a cadence perspective, um, what I was so in the past, we've been doing this every other week. Uh, I think that's been a reasonable cadence. Um, but if there's anybody that feels strongly that we should be meeting more often than that, uh, I don't think I would want to go any less often than that. Um, but if we want to, uh, you know, if we want to do it every week, we can probably do that too. Um, are there any objections to having it every every two weeks? And obviously, we can change our mind later too. No objection. Cool. I like it. Yeah, um, I'm not really sure. It's the first time I'm attending, so it okay, probably depends enough. on our goals. I think. Yep, totally. Yep. We just need. I just need to know if our next meeting should be next week or in two weeks. So it'll probably be in in two weeks. Uh, um, we will be. Either. Okay. Uh, we will be recording all the meetings um, uh, in, unless there are strong objections from anyone. Uh, I think the template that we're basing this off of is I think based off of CNCF. They have a YouTube channel that has everything recorded, which I think is kind of nice and elegant. Um, if there are specific topics that we have a good reason that we would not want to be public, we can either have a separate meeting or turn off recording, I guess. But uh, I think we, we should try our best to have everything be done out, out in the open. Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat this one because I, I don't hear you? Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, say it one more time. Yeah, if you can repeat because I, I could hear you. Of course, sorry. Um, I think we should have recordings be turned on for all meetings as the default. And if there's a particular topic that we have a reason not to want to be recorded, we could have a separate meeting or turn off recording there, but the default I think should be recording for for everything. That's perfect. So it's okay for me. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Um, okay. So working group goals. Um, the oh, where are we? I'm skipping ahead. Hey, Michael, why are you yeah pulling up that? So one of the things we uh, we talked is keep the working groups transparent and open to anyone to attend, right? Yes. Do we have a plan to like publish this to anyone to attend or, or are yes. that like well, the meetings? Sure. I, um, I, I want it to be, uh, I want it to be open for anyone to attend, whether or not I think we should post a public join link on like the GitHub page. I'm not sure of, um, I would just be afraid of, just kind of the spam that might come along with that, uh, but certainly, uh, I mean, a couple of folks on this call, you know, either you know tweeted at me or emailed me um, to join, and you know, I think that process worked. Um, I, I agree. Mean, yeah, I mean, so certainly, if, if there's something broken that we can fix, um, I, I don't have any objections to posting a public join link, um, but it may. I don't know. I, I would rather not if we can avoid that. 
On, on that note, um, I think there's broader discussion across the OpenSSF around how we can make it easier for people to understand the different paths into joining the working groups, because right now it's identified as um, a bit of a problem. It's a little too complicated. So um, there might be some centralized way of doing this in the future as well, but it hasn't been decided at this time. Yep. Yep. And, and certainly if if the OSSF or OpenSSF has a uh, uh, better standard or way of doing things, we'll just snap to that. This was, um, I just kind of set this up this way to get something moving now. Um, Okay, so the objective of the of this this working group um, is is here. You can you can you can all read it. Um, but basically, we we want to provide the information to uh, developers to uh, open source authors uh, as being distinct from like the users of open source uh, compliance teams, security teams, basically anybody that has a stake in the game um, to understand the the security risk that comes with doing what they're doing so from an author's perspective it's you know understanding the threats around of the ecosystem and understanding about you know things like signing and publishing and transitive trust and and things like that from a from a consumer perspective it's understanding what the um vulnerabilities in a particular component or project health it's 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 super broad and one of the challenges well not challenge i guess it's a challenge um prior to a couple weeks ago this working group was called uh, i think was securing open source projects which was way too broad so we narrowed it slightly but it's still very broad uh primarily i think that this working group will succeed if we provide the tools or process or knowledge or you know whatever to let these stakeholders have an understanding of th these risks and these threats and the mitigations that are in place and then make a decision based you know based off that information and we want it to be as easy as possible which is why we're you know kind of biased a little bit towards automation as much as possible. Um, so uh, that's kind of where we are. We've had, uh, we've been working on one project for a couple months now, which I can demo and uh, Jennifer's kind of been spearheading that. So um, I'll, I'll give her, give Jennifer, I'll give you some time to, to chat about that specifically. Um, but we're open for doing other projects as well. I, I, th I think it's, it's not about, um, the the work group is not about a particular tool or implementation or thing it's about this general like w we uh th there are these related challenges in the open source ecosystem and we want to do our best to address that address those challenges is that clear or does anybody would, would anybody like clarification or Anything else you want to add, Jennifer, obviously? I would maybe add um, a reference to the white paper that you had published. So um, Michael, and it was hugely, largely, almost entirely spearheaded by Michael, but um, some of us commented as well, um, published this great paper that was really intended to look sort of end to end at um, threats to open source projects. So instead of breaking it down into just like there's phones and code bases, we wanted to look at um, really the range of, of attack vectors and um, the places where uh, problems can arise that are not just phones and code. Um, so that paper is a really great starting point. And I think that that paper can reflect really a lot of the things that this group is interested in. Um, the challenge that we had when Michael, as Michael had mentioned around the naming of the group, um, kind of falls out in looking at where all the pieces fit together with the other working groups so that we don't have any duplication of effort. Um, that's obviously something we'd like to avoid. So for example, there is a security tooling working group that I imagine um, at some point may want to work on uh, kind of bug hunting at scale in the various ways that that can happen. Um, and obviously that would be out of scope for us. So a lot of a lot of coordination happens kind of on the back end to make sure that there's not these overlapping areas. And when I talk later about um, the dashboard work, um, we can talk more about 
what that entails. Uh, two, two quick questions. Uh, one, can you either post or point to the white paper you mentioned? Absolutely, I'll post it right here in the chat. It is also linked under publications in our GitHub repository. Gotcha. Um, second, you said something about open source authors. Would the term open source contributors be a reasonable yes. alternative term? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. I, I would prefer that term because some people, if you say authors, that implies only the people writing the software, not including auditors and many other folks. Yep. It's intended to be all inclusive. Anybody with a, their finger in the pie. Okay. Uh, and I see uh, St uh, Steve, uh, welcome. Hey, Michael. It's been a while. Um, How you doing? Good. Uh, we we did a quick round of introductions before, and uh, this meeting is being recorded, so you're welcome to refer back to that. But if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself real quick. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so Steve Springett, um, I'm uh, got a few flagship OWASP projects, um, the creator of the OWASP dependency track project, the Cyclone DX software bill of material specification, uh, most recently the software component verification standard. Uh, do a lot of stuff regarding, you know, software supply chain assurance. Um, and um, I actually get paid by, by ServiceNow to do uh, software security architecture for the platform. Great, thank you. Um, Okay, so so we we just uh, see we we just finished talking about kind of the 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 overall goals of the um, of the project of, of the sorry of the working group. Um, does anybody else have have any other questions or clarifications or or anything um, where that might not be? Not yeah, uh, Michael, uh, when you uh, when you gave a brief about uh, the goals of the group itself. Uh, I believe it was still vague. Uh, what I, from what I understand, this is anything which is open source, including tools and platforms. So that uh, that area is still humongous, right? So that yeah. is platform security as well as application security. Yeah. So um, it, it, in in some ways, it's intentionally vague. I would rather not corner myself and not be able to do things that we think are important because we've like artificially scoped it uh, as other working groups like like so for, for instance like like static analysis is clearly oh. within like the security tools working group so if we thought that we needed a static analyzer that would make sense for that, us to kind of push that over and, and try to get them to to, to work on that uh, as far as platform versus application and kind of the level in the stack um, I think they're all important um, yeah. But I would be careful about not. Uh, so, so if 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 it came up with like you know, so uh, Kubernetes, for Correct. for example, um, exactly. if we if we had something like really really big to do just about Kubernetes, I feel like that that might not be the right the right choice for this working group to spend you know an inordinate amount of time on one technology stack, where instead we want to be more broad. And cover uh, cover kind of as much as we can with a common common approach. I kind so, of... uh, I'm sorry, Jennifer, uh, if you were saying something. Oh, that's right. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, from what I understand, again, from based on what you mentioned, is this more in line with coming up with guidelines, or is it about building, actually writing software to do something? So where is this group group heading? Uh, I think it's to both, but Jennifer, I'll, I'll let you jump in. Sure. Um, so uh, I, I think of this group as kind of the meta group in that um, initially we were the securing open source projects group, was the which was the most broad scope thing you could possibly imagine. And we cut it down because it was ridiculous. Um, it's still pretty large. Um, this group originally converged around an interest in creating a metrics dashboard so that we could have kind of like a digest of um, uh, 
pre-processed information that helps um, various stakeholders in the open source ecosystem, be it contributors, users, um, compliance people at companies that use open source, like the whole gamut of uh, individuals who care about security of open source. Um, it originally converged around designing and building POCs of dashboards that could help people see kind of at a glance what the security and related properties are like. So um, really initially we were we were wanting to focus on um, abstracting out these broader questions and summarizing that information in a consumable way um, because it's very hard like there's a lot of heuristic challenges around um, identifying exactly how secure a project is and whether using a component is a good security choice or bad um, and obviously it's still not easy to say good or bad but rather you can paint a picture of like associated risk um, so this group kind of gathered around this idea of let's create this holistic way of people understanding um, the security properties of different components of open source software um, and then the white paper that i was referencing um, authored by Michael, further explored kind of the range of things that can impact a project that might later be reflected on a dashboard, but also beyond. Um, so I kind of think of this within the open SSF as the group that steps back and says, hold on, like, what are we missing? What is the big picture? And then the other groups would be the ones that would focus on specific things. So I know that there's a group that does tooling and they'd want to do like query languages like CodeQL and stuff for looking across um, a code base or, you know, making better use of static analysis and our dashboard would start to aggregate the static analysis results and things like that. Um, but we would never do like the heavy instrumentation or anything. Um, so I think of this group really as kind of the like meta analysis roadmap um, overview group. But I don't know, Michael, if, if that resonates with you. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I think if we do, I mean, there, there still is kind of meat on the bone of what this group will do. So we are, and I'll, I'll show a demo in a few minutes, but um, it's, yeah, I, I think that, that we, uh, I, I, actually, Jennifer, it's exactly as you said, yes. And I guess um, another thing, oh, sorry. Uh, I guess another thing I would quickly add as well is that um, we still have a very strong bias toward action. So what I just described sounds super theoretical. Um, I, I think it's important to also note that our, our intent is to create useful POCs and not to wallow in the deep, deep end of creating standards or anything like that. And also not to just have these like hypothetical ideas, but rather the, the white paper, for example, was a springboard into creating actual usable tools on a short term, like pushing to production in reasonable time period basis. Right. So uh, I, I'm sorry if I'm taking too much time, but uh, no. uh, so the the closest thing which I can think of, at least I can relate to, is the S I E M side of security, right? Uh, because you mentioned uh, yeah, collecting metrics from various uh, logs, uh, it could come from any kind of tools, and we are cre aggregating and trying to figure out intelligent info out of it, which you are. Visualizing in the dashboard, I suppose. Yes, you could you could look at it at least conceptually as a seam. Um, but um, you know what, Jennifer, do you want to just jump into the metrics dashboard and we'll we'll just kind of because I think a lot of things are yeah sure. will become clearer as we go. Yeah, I think talking through an example can help. Um, so the metrics dashboard, as I mentioned, was kind of the core project that brought us all together. Um, we've been working on it for a couple of months now. We're aiming for within about a month from now to publish like the first um, first proof of concept of it. So really, we were taking this multi-stakeholder approach because we were looking at all the different people that would look at an op open source project or repo or tool, and there can be like various levels of abstraction to which they'd want to understand something um, and, and need to make a security um, judgment around it. And I know that like even as someone who thinks about security all the time and is professionally doing this for a long time, um, it's very complex to look at a project and holistically and thoroughly understand um, the security implications of using it. So the, the service we were really trying to provide and the problem we were trying to solve was to 
give better ways of quantifying and and processing um, the information that can lead to sort of an intuitive judgment as to um, what is risky around a project, what the security properties are, and things like that. Um, so over the last uh, several working sessions, we have gone through a number of concrete steps. Um, so we were looking at different things we'd want to measure. We'd look at uh, different metrics that were out there in the wild that we could make use of. Um, we were looking at uh, what kinds of processing we might have to do to compute things into um, a more digestible form. Um, and we were thinking as well about a lot of the user experience and user interface related things where we might want to have um, some high level kind of logos or um, visuals that can help understand at a glance what the security is, but then also you might be able to dig in and click on something and see, for example, like a t transitive dependency tree or something like this. Um, so we've been working through a lot of the kind of underlying questions that are required to build out um, a dashboard that can display the, these different types of security risk based upon calculated metrics. Um, and we're interested in uh, POCing that. So really this dashboard project, the intended outcome is twofold. One piece is uh, POC of the actual dashboard itself and Michael can show us some of what he has. And if Ryan's on the call, he can show us some cool stuff as well. Um, and then the other piece is just a callable API that is uh, usable and consumable in, in all kinds of other ways. So um, part of its visual, part of its API, um, and the real point is to illustrate um, various types of security risks. So um, we've been thinking about kind of digestible ways of communicating everything from like, this is risky because it's written in a lower level non-memsafe -mem language, or this is risky because it's a cryptographic implementation, all the way to here are existing security audits, here are recent static analysis results, and all that kind of stuff. There's also a project health component where we are interested in um, giving kind of a sliding scale of risk around uh, a project going unmaintained and there being availability issues. Um, and these are just a couple of examples and maybe Michael can talk us through um, some of the, the diagrams that we have so far and some of the POCs that he's been building. Sure, so uh, I, I'll stop. Are there any questions so, so far on that? Okay, so Besides this being a, a, a uh, not very attractive UI, um, uh, Ryan's been working on a much prettier version. Uh, but from a content perspective, um, the at least the concept here is that uh, this dashboard thing um, goes out and looks on the internet, you know, absorbs projects. So in this case, you know, um, Madler Zlib. And it will pull in data on active maintainers and uh, you know other kind of metadata. So whether it's distributed on npm or GitHub or some other place, it uh, first of all it normalizes things, uh, performs calculations on those, and then uh, it would provide enough information back to you, the the reader, uh, to understand what its security posture is. So things like project health. Um, and this is very much like pre, less like somewhere barely proof of concept. So a lot of it is empty. Um, but if you were to look at the metadata for some of the, actually, that's probably not a good one. So npm react. Um, so even just pulling back, like where is the source code for this located? And is the build that you get through the package manager uh, reproducible? Um, what is you know, all of the metadata that you have? Like where, where did it come from? Um, security advisories, are there, you know, CVEs would be are like the easiest one, but what else can we do beyond that? Uh, and basically pull all this stuff together into one place and then, as Jennifer said, kind of funnel it out either through a UI or through an API. Uh, and we think that if we can do this, um, it, it's actually, so So the, um, uh, the, the CII uh, badge project, um, and David, I'm glad you're 
on the call. Uh, and, I, I'd and I'd love for you to, to, to talk about this because this came up a couple of times where, you know, it, it I, I, I forgot who said it, but someone said, you know, hey, isn't this kind of just like the badge project? And I think that the place that, at least in my mind, I, I differentiated was I said, well, everything for for this dashboard is automatically generated. There's no human, like, um, no one has to attest that anything is being done. Uh, and the supposition is that if we're really smart, we can get really close to what someone would have attested without having to ask them the question. Um, but I'd love to yeah, get that. That hasn't, yeah, that actually hasn't been our experience. We have maximized, we have done our best to automate as much as we can. But it's interesting that, that we, uh, there is, is a, some differentiation the, in the badging project. Uh, we wanted to maximize automation, but we basically said if we if it's important and you can't automate it, it's okay. Important is more important than automation for its, you know, automating what is not important <laughs> is not important. Uh, Definitely. But, uh, but that said, um, I, I can tell you right up right up front, I've actually had some talks with the chaos folks over the last number of years. I'm not sure if you know those folks. Okay. Um, but uh, it. The, because of the way the badging project works, you know, you have to meet certain criteria to get a badge. I think it would be very, very helpful to help people find metrics to help make decisions, which is not what the badging project has historically been about. So, for example, if as soon as you launch this, um, you know, I could try to make it so that anybody who looks at the badging can immediately go click and see and jump to this website and see all the dashboard data. And similarly, we could go the other way back. Right, where, absolutely, right, yeah. right. So basically, you know, hey, shockingly, let's have projects work together. <laughs> it could happen. <laughs> it, it, it could happen. Um, yep. Yeah, now we, we actually have collected some metrics uh, and some automation already. And, you know, I mean, it's all open source, so you're, you're welcome to use it. Um, but uh, I, you know, like we don't, but I, I will say right up front, we don't collect, for example, collect complexity measures. So that's a, you know, certainly of interest, and uh, I'm sure people would want to know. And so, you know, let let's all pull it pull the same way, folks. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So we, uh, and as I said, you're certainly welcome to reuse or even just steal ideas from uh, the automation we do do. That's great. Um, I think so. So so the other thing where um. I think we'll, so part of my day job is I have a tools team that, that does that right security tools, a lot of them focus on open source. So as an example, one of the tools that uh, we do is around typo squatting. Okay, so awesome. To, kn to know that like for Django, there are these other Python uh, projects that have very similar names and some of them are just totally legit and some of them are totally not legit um and but to be able to see that and come come out in one place is is something where like the the in this case you know pypy doesn't offer that in any way through through their interface so you'd have to kind of scrape it yourself um but pulling these things in i think provide we, we can provide more than just Kind of simple aggregates uh, or trending or or things like that. And, and I, I think there's a ton of value in just seeing like the, the trend line of releases and seeing that like the last release was in 2017 and the last commit was a month after that and that's it. Um, but we can do I think a lot more than that. Yep. Um, but 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 a quick note. Uh, one thing that uh, I think is valuable for typo squatting uh, is you know how you know measuring downloads or popularity or anything that hints that, you know, this thing spelled Django is a hundred times more popular than this spell thing spelled almost Django. <laughs> yep. Totally. Totally. Um, yeah. So uh, that's kind of, kind of, that's kind of what we have right now. So, so as, as Jennifer alluded, you know, we're, we're looking for kind of an MVP level thing by the end of this month, which is coming up pretty quick. Um, I think we can we can do that. Um, it'll be one of those, you know, very MVP like expect the database to be wiped at any point. Uh, I'm going to try to get the source code to this and a um, a Docker container that anybody can just run locally um, to play with. Uh, 
I was hoping to do it by the meeting right now. Uh, it'll probably be by tomorrow. So I'll, I'll have that out. We have a repo already set up. On Stu stupid question, uh, yep. the, the code itself open source? Yes, everything is open source. Uh, the, some of the, obviously we're gonna be collecting some data from uh, tools, right. some of which are by their nature, not open source. Right, but, a piece, got that. But I mean, the, yeah. the actual tool that's doing the gathering and yep. pulling it out. Yep, yep, and and most of it is, yeah, it, it, yes, it'll all be open source. Um, it's not super interesting. It's just a Django Python thing, but um, that that's yeah. why I, I think it's more for perception than anything else. You because totally. I, I think I, for good or for <laughs> at, for bad, uh, Open SSF I think is getting a lot of eyeballs. I don't know if you noticed, but there's uh, I saw over thirty uh, different media articles about it. This is good. Yep. But I, I, I don't want I, I want I, I want there to be as much as possible goodness when people talk about it. So you don't want us to have our closed source proprietary tool on uh, visualizing <laughs> open source metrics. <laughs> at, at least not as the first foot forward. <laughs> <laughs> Might not be. And it's not I me. Mean, you know, GitHub, the, the source for GitHub itself is closed source. That's not the issue. It's the, you know, what what is this group specifically doing? If yep. that yeah, makes sense. That makes sense. We have we have shared values on that one. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Partly because we don't want to get flamed on the internet, but also for the uh, broader and more like ideologically consistent reasons. <laughs> Well, I, I would also just, and not just, I mean, we'll all be flamed on the internet occasionally. It's a, it's a hazard of doing anything, but I, I'd rather <laughs> at least at least uh, be flamed for the right reasons. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd put that on a t-shirt. I believe in that so much. <laughs> oh, what was on his t-shirt? I, 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 I would put it on a t-shirt. I believe in that so much. We're all going to get flamed on the internet, so let <laughs> it be for the right reasons. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Um, let's see. Um, so, so the, the current status of the, of this kind of dashboard for, from a, uh, there's, there's a couple different pieces. One is like just the mechanics of like the, the implementation of how do you, you know, make it do what we want it to do. Uh, and then the other side is like, what do we want it to do? So the, the specifics on the, uh, the metrics, which somewhere in here, I think I've probably lost it. Um, Uh, so, so these kinds of things, um, you know, so code complexity, like, is, like how valuable is this, and what would the right measure be, and how would it, how should we convey it? Is it a um, objective thing or a subjective thing? We had a lot of a, a lot of conversation on that, on like how, um, you know, if we start telling open source projects right. they get an F because they're terrible, like that doesn't make any friend that like it's not it's not achieving the right or we, we don't think it would achieve the right you know what, what what we're trying to achieve but at the same time as a consumer you do kind of want to know which ones are bad and if we tell everybody they get an a uh then that we we could just you know publish that and and, and go home so we, we i think i think that it's important to be able to differentiate both the objective like you haven't had a release in three years. Like there's no, you know, modulo bugs that you can't really argue with that. And then we can have a subjective opinion that says that if you haven't had a release in three years, we don't think that you're a project that should be used in high risk or critical situations. And you could disagree with our opinion there. Um, and we even went so far as to talk about, can you bring your own opinion and have, you know, you as a, you know, either as a contributor to the project or just as a user, can you say these are the things that are important to me and have the these kind of opinions be rendered in a way that reflects your values rather than ours? Um, and that may be uh, not coming in the, it's, it's definitely not coming in the MVP, um, but I think it's important to think about how we differentiate between like just the facts and like an SSL labs, which I think does this quite well where they, they do have, you know, then you know exactly why you got a B plus instead of an A minus. Um, so. 
Well, and if, if if the dashboard is just showing the facts, that's a whole lot easier. I mean, is even is probably not going to change in three years, ever. Yep. Well, <laughs> probably new okay. Never know. Ah, uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> but it probably is not going to change. Whereas a larger project, that's kind of concerning. Yep. Yep. Um. Okay. Cool. Uh. Perfect. Let's see. Is it? Uh, I I have some time for open discussion. We can continue this about the metric dashboard and 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 all that. Uh, we'd like to get some next steps and just know where we're what we're going to be doing over the next two weeks. Um, but for now, uh, kind of the the floor is open to anyone. All right. So uh, I think. Uh, uh, the objectives which you mentioned and including the features which uh, you hope to have in that dashboard. Uh, I think it is a culmination of a few tools. Uh, something like uh, Sonar. Sonar does a lot of it, what, what you mentioned, the uh, uh, complexity computation, uh, even static analysis for finding out uh, if, if, I mean, a few of the top 10 OWASP standards. And there, there was actually one more project which I forgot. I think it is from JetBrains, but which also does a lot of what you mentioned, which is the metadata about open source projects, uh, meaning the number of downloads and the number of maintainers, when was the last update, a lot of things like that. So I, I believe this looks like a aggregation of multiple such tools. Uh, maybe I, I think we should be able to learn from those tools as well. Yes, I think we should learn from every tool out there. Um, I'm, I wouldn't want to. So I'm, I'm, I, I think we should be careful about being too tightly coupled to any particular implementation. So even though um, on the on the static side, um, there's a lot of focus on CodeQL. CodeQL is owned by GitHub. Um, so there is a, there is a tight coupling there. Um, now it's free for open source projects, but regardless, it's still tightly coupled. Um, similarly, I think Sonar, um, you know, the Sonar's implementation of, you know, roll up and aggregates and static and and complexity and all of that. Uh, I would want to learn from that that, you know, complexity is th these measures of complexity are most valuable. And then we go about use it, using that. Um, uh, and where I'm not sure is places where, like, can we just link? Like, so, so for instance, over here, um, uh, security validation. Yeah. So here, you know, we can just link out to lgtm.com and see what what it knows about Django. And I think this was kind of a, a little bit of a cop out in that it, it just, it defers everything to some other place. But at the same time, I don't think we want to be the be all end all of all things open source security. And therefore I think it does make sense to uh, refer the user to other places where they can get high quality, uh, high quality information. Um, But yeah, yeah, I would say wherever we can learn from, we should we should learn. And if it's open source, I think we should feel more um, uh, so for like you know a wasp um, uh, dependency track and dependency check. like yes, it makes more sense, I think, to integrate those things tighter. So I, I think at least in the case of Sonar, the community edition is free because that's something which I use in our company as well. And uh, uh, it gives a lot of things. It's quite nice, uh, and I, I think the latest metrics for complexity now, what they use is uh, cognitive complexity. So earlier it used to be cyclomatic. Now, now it is uh, cognitive. Uh, so quite nice computations there, and it gives you a lot of insight, uh, including duplicates in code, uh, code quality. Uh, I mean, Sonar is kind of a one-stop shop for all kind of static analysis. At least for uh, all my use cases, I think it has helped a lot. Uh, yeah. So uh, the other one, uh, like I said, I, I forgot. If if I find out, I I think I'll share in this group. Uh, 
okay. the other uh, the other source i mean the other tool which which is again an open source tool uh, which gives you a lot of uh, metadata about any open source project and i think primarily uh, its source is github got it Yes, uh, yes, uh, SNCC is, is good. I, I, I think um, OSS Index and there's another um, libraries.io also does does some sort of aggregate, um, some aggregate work. Cool, what else? What else from yeah, I, I've, actually, I've actually done some work with some of the libraries, IO data, data and uh, Harvard uh, did uh, quite a bit of analysis using that uh, for a recent report that they did. So uh, happy to chat uh, separately about how to, uh, some of the quirks of that, using that data, those data sets. Yes. Yep, actually it's, it's, we, we use the libraries at IO because if you query the, if you pull the API and you sort by publish date, you can effectively get a running stream of all new published packages. Um, not all of them include things like a download link, which would be super useful if they did, but um, it lets you kind of keep your finger on the pulse of the ecosystem um, as new things get published. So it's super useful. Correct. And, um, and another thing which I, I'd like to know, uh, again, yeah. uh, I think it is regarding the goal of the group itself. So, uh, and I I already saw we have a member from Auger also. So, uh, uh, would we be concentrating anything related to IAM, uh, the business logic side of things, meaning identity and access management? Uh, would the group would be looking towards that also, or is it uh, all pure software and lower level security? So one of the one of the threats that we talked about a bunch in the white paper um, was around um, you know an attacker compromises your publishing credentials and publishes a fake package. So as much as two-factor auth or more generally strong auth is really really important to the ecosystem, I think it is um, a place where we can feel confident to contribute. Um, there is a separate working group that is in discussions called, uh, it's like developer identity or strong developer identity or something like that, where that's, uh, my understanding of that, of that working group is that it'll touch on things like a software bill of materials and signed attestations and kind of end to end, um, kind of upping the game on, uh, what would normally be a, you know, just use two factor when you publish to NPM to how do you maintain kind of uh, integrity from your desktop commit to GitHub to an action to publish to me consume to use. Um, and I think that it's that end to end story that we need to get right. I'm not convinced yet that like strong developer identity can, I, I think, can go the wrong way. So uh, if, if not done properly, so, um, so so I think IAM stuff kind of fits in probably in both working groups to some extent. I don't know, Jennifer, I, I know you, you were probably part of more of those conversations um, on the um, developer identity stuff than, than me. Honestly, there's not been much discussion about it. We know it's a controversial t topic, but we haven't dug deep into it. Um, I, w I personally am very interested in finding out more details about it yep. because it can certainly go really well, but there's also uh, some things we really have to watch out for. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah just... Then... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to add a couple of words around the um, security of uh, the authentication and the developer identity. Uh, stuff. I know that there is a lot of, maybe not a lot of, but a couple of members from Outzero that are involved into variety of um, groups that are working on open OpenID or uh, security of the identity solutions and all of the th things related authentication. Uh, so I can gather like a list of groups they are involved or groups that are actively working on that, and I can share that. But I believe 
it would be hard to work on these topics in particularly in this group. It's like super broad topic and there is a lot of discussion on those groups already happening. And I know they talk about security as well and it's the important aspect. So I can gather this information and share that. If that's helpful. Cool, thank you. Uh, okay, we have a, a little over a minute left. Uh, so I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Is there anything else that anyone would like to, to chat about as a last topic? Yeah. I see so, Dixon has posted something in the chat. Yeah, so I wanted to ask about, you know, do we, will we have an MS channel for this group? Normally we have Slack channels, right? So yeah. is there um, a plan for it? So I think I'd like to defer that to see what the OpenSSF wants to do all up. We should be a peer of all of the others. The only reason that we're using Teams is I work for Microsoft and that was the easiest thing for me to set up. So I don't want to presume that it'll be Teams going forward. If it's Zoom or anything else, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I think it should be the same as the other one. So let's give it a couple of weeks we will have a place to do discussions. I don't know that GitHub discussions is the, uh, I've never used it before. It seems like it might work, but it may, it also seems a little bit like it's meant more for like questions and answers like a stack overflow thing. So if that's, if it's the wrong tool, we'll find the right tool. Um, but I think it's important that we have a place that we can, we can communicate. I think GitHub uses GitHub for this. I sorry. I so so in the in the GitHub. Um, so they have something called Gitter, right? Oh, Git. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I think they use friendly but, that. But is that is that that's a totally separate service, right? That like Gitter has nothing to do with GitHub other than it has Git in the name. I think. Um, um, it's like Slack, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it does. But yeah, I, whether it's that or Discord yeah, yeah. or yeah. Um, yeah, I would say uh, let's give the OpenSSF and Linux Foundation a couple of weeks to figure out this. Uh, for now, if you want to post anything here under discussions, I don't see why not. Um, and that way you can just watch it and it's it's there. Uh, hey, Michael, real, um, real quick question uh, regarding this MVP you're trying to work in the end of the month and what, what you're going to be putting and the Google Sheet showing the metrics that you're hoping to do. Um, what if, are you going to be sharing that? Is that already available? Yes, I, I will be share. So I will be posting the, uh, I lost the link to the notes. There are. Um, I will be putting the source code here. Uh, expect this by, I would say tomorrow. Uh, expect this link to actually not be a hello, you know, a, a, you know coming soon construction page. Uh, in a couple more days, uh, and then uh, everybody's welcome to contribute and, and 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 everything there. I will post. I will find the other links to things like the um, the dashboard. All this. I'll consolidate all of that and throw these in the notes as well. So this link will be your for now, for at least for the next short period of time, uh, where we will dump everything. Okay. Which which link are we talking about here? The docs.google link that uh, is in the uh, was up in the chat. So the uh, one that I'm showing right now, uh, I'll post it. The, the Open SSF identifying security threats meeting notes. Yes, on page starting on page three of that. Uh, right under see this white paper. Oh, I see. Here we go. MVP web website. Got it. Yep. Thank you. Cool. That's what I was looking for. Awesome. All right. Uh, if there's nothing else, thank you all very much for, for attending. Please fill out the uh, doodle so we can get a, uh, a, be a meeting time that works for as many people as possible. And if we need to stagger it or do it every other, every other meeting, we'll, we, we'll, we'll do whatever we need to do. Um, so once again, thank you all. Enjoy your, the rest of your Monday. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.